Goblin Market by Christina Georgina Rossetti. Morning and evening, maids hear the goblins cry. Come buy your orchard fruits, come buy, come buy. Apples and quinces, lemons and oranges, plum and pet cherries, melons and raspberries, bloom down check peaches, sword headed mulberries, wild free born cranberries, crab apples, strawberries, pineapples, blackberries, apricots, strawberries, all ripped together in summer weather. Morns that pass by, fair eaves that fly, come by, come by, our grass fresh from the wine, pomegranates full and fine, dates and sharp spolets, rare peas and greenwich, damsons and bilberries, taste them and try, currants and gooseberries, bright fire like blackberries, fix to fill your mouth, citrons from the south, sweet to tanf and sound to eye, come by, come by. Evening by evening. Among the brookside rushes, law about her head to hear, lazy violet her blushes, crouching close together in the cooling weather, with clasping arms and continuous lips, with tingles, checks and fingertips. Lie close, law said, picking up her golden head. We must not look at goblin men, we must not buy their fruits, who knows upon what say we fed. We're hungry, thirsty roots, come by, call the goblins. Hobbling down the glen, oh, cried Lizzie, lower, lower, you should not pep at goblin man. Lizzie covered up her eyes, covered close, lest they should look. Lower reared her glossy head, and whispered like a restless brook. Look, Lizzie, look, Lizzie. Down the glen trapped little man, one holds a basket, one bears a plate, one lacks a gold dish of many pounds weight. How oh, fair the vine must draw. Whose grapes are sold as kisses, a warm wind must blow, for whose fruit bushes. No, said Izzy, no, no, no. The office should not charm us, their like evil gifts would harm us. She trusted them with finger, and each ear should ace and run. Curious now I choose for linger, wondering at each merchant man. One had a cat's face, one whisk a tail, one trimmed at red's pace, one crawled like a snail, one like a wombat proud, obtuse of fury, one like a rattled jumbled howl skewery. She heard a voice, like a voice of doves, cooing it together. It sounded kind and full of laughs, in the pleasant weather. Laura stretched a gleaming neck, like a rushing bead swan, like a lily from her back, like a moonlit pope or bench, like a vessel at the launch. When its last restraint is gone, back what's up the muslin can, turned and shook the goblin man, with a shrill repeated cry, Come by, come by. When I reached the lower moss, we stood still upon the moss, eluding at each other, brother with cree brother, signaling each other, brother with sly brother, one set this basket down, one rugged his plate, one began to weave a crown of trainless leaves and roof nuts brown. When Eve to golden wheat, of dish and fruit to offer, come by, come by, or still a cry, lower start, but did not steer, long but had no money, a whisk tail, merchant made her taste, and tons as smooth as honey, the cat face purred, the red face spoke a word, of welcome, and with snail paste even was hard, one pebble voiced a jolly, cried, pretty goblin, still for pretty goblin, was whistled like a bird. But sweet to flower, spoke in haste. Good folk, I have no coin to take where to pull I have no copper in my purse, I have no silver either, and all my gold is on the furs, which shakes in windy weather. Above the rusty heaven, you have but gold upon your head, we answered all together. By from us, with a golden curl, she clipped the precious golden look, she dropped a tear more rare than pearl, when sucked the fruit gloves fair or red. Sweeter than honey from a rock, stronger than man by joining wine, clearer than water full of the juice. She never tasted such before. Or should it cloy with length of use? She sucked and sucked and sucked the more fruits which would unknown orchard bore. She sucks until her lips were sore, and flung when tires rinse away, or gave it up at Colonel Stone, and knew not was it night or day, as she turned home alone. Lizzie met her at the gate, full of rice upbraidings. Dear, you should not stay so late. Twilight is not good for maidens. Should not loiter in the glen and the horns of goblin men. Do you remember, Jamie, how she met them in the moonlight? 
Chocolate gifts both choice and many, April fruits and raw the close, plucked from brows, where summer ribbons at all hours, but ever in the noon light she pinned and pined away, softened by night and day, fawn from the moor, but dwindling and grew grey, when fell with the first snow, while to a stain of grass will grow, where she lies low. I planted daisies where a year ago, would never blow. You should not lie to so. My hush, said Laura. My hush, my sister. I ate and ate my fill, and my mouth water still. Tomorrow night I will buy more and kissed her. I've done the sorrow. I bring you plums tomorrow. Fresh on the mother's drinks, cherries worth getting. You cannot think what fix. My teeth have met in what malicious ice cold, paled on a dish of gold. Too huge for me to hold, what peaches with a velvet nap, delicious grapes without one seed, odorous indeed must be the meat. Rare on they grew, and pure away for drink, with lilies at the brink, and sugar sweet were sap. Golden heat, my golden heat, like two pinions in one nest, food in each other's wings. We lay down in a curtain bed, like two blossoms on stern, like two flakes of new fallen snow, like two wands of ivory, tipped with gold for awful kings. Moon and stars gazed in at them, wind sings to them lullaby, lumbering owls for a butterfly, not a bed flapping to and fro, round their nest, check to check and breast to breast, locked together in one nest. Early in the morning, the first could crow his warning. Neat like bees, and sweet and busy, the little rose with lazy, fetched in honey, milked the cows, aired and set to ride the house. Knee cakes of whitest wheat, cakes for dainty, mouths to eat. Next charge of butter would appear, fed like poetry, sad and sweet. Talked as modest, maiden should, lazy with an open heart, a lower and absent dream. One content, one sick in part, raving for the mere bright day's daylight, or longing for the night. At length, slow evening came, we ran with pictures to a ready brook. Lizzie most placed in a look, low most like a living flame, we drew the girly water from its deep. Lizzie plucked purple and rich gold flecks, when turned towards, said, For sunset's flushes, it was further as lofty as cracks. Come, there were not another maiden lungs. No white foot squirrels wax, the beasts and birds are fast asleep. But our loiterers stand among the rushes and said the bank was steep. And said the hour was early still, but you not fall the wind nor chill. Listening ever, but not catching, I can see you cry, but come by, come by, with its illicit jingle of sugar patent words, not for all her watching. Once this current, even one goblin, where he sing, whistling, tumbling, howling, let alone the hurts, but used to tramp along the glen in groups of singer of bricks fruit merchant men. Till Lizzie irked, Olera, come, I hear the fruit call, but I dare not look. You should not loiter longer, as this brook. Come with me home. The stars rise, the moon bends her arc. Each glow warm rings the spark. You must go home before the night draws dark. For clouds may gather, fulpers in summer weather, when out the lights and ruin are through. When, if we lost our way, what should we do? Laura turned, called a stone, to find the sister heard, but cry aloud. That goblin cry, come by, our fruits, come by. But she will buy no more such dainty fruit. Must she no more such sucks pace to find, gone deaf and blind? Here free of life, dropped from the root. She said not one word, in her heart so age, but paying through the dimes, nor discovering, trudged home, her pictures dripping all the way, so crept to bed and lay, silent till Lizzie slept, but sat up in a passionate yearning, and gnashed her teeth, for vulgar desire, and wept, as if her heart would break. Day after day, night after night, Laura kept watching in vain, in sudden silence, of skiing pain. She never caught again the goblin cry, Come by, come by. She never spied the goblin man, hawking the fruits along the glen. But when the noon wakes bright, her hair grew thin and grey. She dwindled as she fair for a move doth turn, to swift decay and burn, her fire away.
One day, remembering a kernel stone, she sat in by a wall which faced the south, greed in the tiest, hoped for a root, watched for a waxing shoot. But where came none, it never saw the sun, it never failed to tricking on zero or run, while with sunk ace and faded mouth, she dreamed of melons as a traveller sees, for its waves the desert truth. The wide shade of leaf crown trees, and burns the firsties in the sandful breeze. She, no more, swept the house, tended the fools or cows, fetched honey, kneed cakes of what, brought water from the brook, but sat down listless in the chimney look, and would not eat. Tender Lizzie could not bear to watch her sister's kangaroo's care, yet not to share. She night and morning caught the goblin's cry, Come by, your orchard fruits, come by, come by. Beside the brook along the glen, she had a tramp of goblin men, her voice and stare. Poloa could not hear, longed to buy fruit to comfort her, but feared to pay it too dear. She thought of Jenny in her grave, who should have been a bride. But who for joyous brides hoped to have, felt sick and died, and her gay prime, in an earnest winter time, with the first glazing rhyme, the first snow fall of crisp winter time. Till her hour drinking seemed knocking at heaven's door. But Lizzie waited no more, better and worse. But put a silver penny in her purse, kissed Laura across the heath of plums of ferns, a twilight ordered by the brook, and for the first time in her life began to listen and look. Laughed every goblin, who respired a peeping, come toward a hobbling, flying, running, leaping, puffing and blowing, chuckling, clipping, growing, chucking and Gobbling, mobbing and moving, full of airs and graces, pulling her right phrases, demure grimaces, cat like and red like, red land rumored like, snail paced in a hurry, parrot voiced and whistless, helter skelter, howy scurry, chattering like magpies, fluttering like piggins, gliding like fishes. Hugged her and kissed her, squeezed and kissed her, stretched up the dishes, panniers and plates. Look at our apples, rusted and done, what about our cherries? Bided our peaches, settled in dates, grapes for the asking, peas red for basking. Out of the sun, plums on the tricks, pluck them and suck them, pomegranates fix. Good folk, said Lizzie, mindful of Jenny, give me much and many. Hold out the brown, toss them her penny, lay, take a seat with us, honor and eat with us. We answered grinning, our feast is but beginning, not yet as early, warm and you pearly. Wakeful and starry, such fruits as we, no man can carry. Half a bloom would fly, half a dew would dry, half a flower would pass by. Sit down and feast with us, be welcome, guest with us, cheer you and rest with us. Thank you, said Lizzie, but one waits, at home alone for me. So forth further pelling, if you not sell me any, of your fruits for much and many, give me back my silver penny, and toss you for a fee. They began to scratch their pates. No longer webbing, bewing, but visible with demuring, grunting and snarling, on court approach, cross craning and uncivil, their tones waxed loud, their looks were evil, lashing their tates. They trotted and hustled here, elbowed and jostled here, clawed with her nails, barking, mowing, hissing, mocking, tore her gown and soiled her stocking. Twitched her hair out by the roots, stamping upon her tender feet, held her hands and squeezed her fruits against her mouth to make her eat. White and golden, Lizzie stirred, like a lily in the flood, like a rock of blue vein stone, lashed her tights obstreperously, like a beacon left alone in a hurry, roaring sea, sending up a golden fire, like a fruit crowned orange tree. With white blossoms, honey sweet, so beset by wasp and bee, like a royal virgin town, tooth of gilt doom and spire, close beguiled by a fleet, made to tuck a standard down. One may lead a horse to water, twenty cannot make him drink, for the goblins cuffed and caught her, coaxed and fought her, bullied and besought her, scratched her, pinched her, black as ink, kicked and knocked her, mowed and mocked her, lizard heard not a word. Would not open lip from lip, lest we should cram a move for it, but laughed and hard to fear a trip. Of juice with soup all her face, and lodged the dimples of her shin, and struck her neck with cork like curd. At the least people, worn out by her resistance, flung 
bag, a penny, kicked for fruit, along whichever road we took, not leaving root or stone or stood, stood rifted in the ground. Some dived into a brook, with ring and ripple, some scurred on the gale without a sound, some vanished in the distance. In a smart egg tingle, Lizzie went her way, knew not was night or day, sprang up the bank, trough over firds, treating cops and dingle, and hard a penny jingle, bouncing in a purse. Its bounce was music to her ear. She ran and ran, as if she feared some goblin man, dodged her with gib or curse, or something worse. But not one goblin skirt after, nor was she pricked by fear. The kind heart made her windy paste, but urged her how cried out of breath faced, and inward laughter. She cried, Laura, I forgot. Did you miss me? Come and kiss me. Never mind my bruises. Hug me, kiss me, suck my juices, squeezing from goblin fruit for you, goblin pulp and goblin dew. Eat me, drink me, laugh me, Laura, make much of me. For her sake I have braved for Glen, and had to do with goblin merchant man. Laura started from the chair, flung her arms up in the air, clutched her hair. Lizzie, Lizzie, have you tasted? For my sake, the fruit forbidden, must your light like mine be hidden? Your young life, like mine, be wasted, undone in mine undone, and running in my ruin. First he came at Goblin Wren, she clung about her sister, kissed and kissed and kissed her. Tears once again refreshed her shrunken eyes, dropping like rain, of long sight redrawn, shaking with iggish fear and pain. She kissed and kissed with a hungry mouth. Her lips began to scrooge, but juice was warm word to her tongue. She loathed the feast. Writing as one possessed, she leaped and sung, rent all her rope and rung, her hands in lamentable haste, and beat her breast. Her look streamed like the torch, borne by a racer at full speed, or like the mane of horses in the flight, or like an eagle with the steams of light, straight towards the sun, or like a catched thing freed, or like a flying fleck when armies run. Swift fire spread through her veins, knocked at her heart, made the fire's morning rare, and a born in its flame. She gorged on bitterness without a name. Ah, fool, to choose such part of soul-consuming care, since failing in the mortal strife, like a watchtower of a town, with an earthquake shatters down, like a lightning-stricken mast, like a wind approved tree, spun about, like a fool top the water's boat, cast down headlong in the sea. She fell at last. Pleasure passed, and English passed. Is it death, or is it life? Life out of death, but night long Lizzie watched by her, counted her pool's flagging stire, fade for her breath, had water to her lips, and cooled her face with tears and fanning leaves. But when the first bird shaping about her eaves, and early reapers blew to the place of golden shivers, and dew wet grass bowed in the morning, went to brisk to pass, and new buds with new day opened up cup like lilies on the steam. Laura awoke as from a deep, laughed in the innocent old way, at Lizzie, but not twice or thrice. A grim look showed not one of great of grey, a brief was sweet as may, and light danced in her eyes. Days, weeks, months, years. Afterwards, when both the wives, with children and their own, their mother's hearts beset the fierce, where lives bound up in tender lives. Laura would call the little runs, and tell them of the eerie prime, those flesh days long gone, of not returning time, would talk about the haunted glen, the ricked, quaint fruit merchant man, the fruits like honey to the throat, but poison in the blood, would tell them how her sister stood, and had he peril to do her good, and win the fire antidote, and joining hands to little hands, would bite and cling together, for where is no friend like a sister? And calm or stormy weather, to cheer one of a teacher's way, to fetch one of one goes astray, to lift one of one to the stone, to strengthen whilst one stands.